I'm Nigel Tonks and uh, I'd like to share with you a presentation that we were invited to give at the UK Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy uh, this week. And it was a presentation that we gave uh, in an international uh, context on how to decarbonize global property and the importance of creating a comparable international data set for whole life carbon. Taking this opportunity to share with you our perspective on how whole life carbon assessments are a critical first step to accelerating decarbonization at scale. It's a program that we've invested in heavily over the last 12 months and it's with some excitement that I can share now for the first time some of the insights from our work. Since COP26 in Glasgow last year, huge swathes of the global economy have entered a commitment to net zero. Like many others, Arup set its SBTI targets to decarbonize our corporate business. At the same time, we were very conscious that the building sector plays an absolutely critical role in climate action. While not part of our scope one, two and three emissions, we are conscious that our greatest impact is in the design and delivery of services for the built environment. This decade of action is shorthand for everything that we must do in the industry to hit the Paris aligned near term targets. While we see signs of progress, exemplary pilot projects, pioneering materials, innovative techniques, we don't yet have a handle on system change at the scale and the pace necessary to meet these targets. Quantifying whole life carbon is key to unlocking systems change to drive upfront decision making. When we speak of whole life carbon, we must include embodied, and operational carbon. Upfront embodied carbon matters greatly right now, but so does accounting for the future and it's critically important to understand the impacts of grid decarbonization and forecasting retrofits to sustain a long low carbon life for our building stock. So we look ahead over a 60 year period. After 30 years in industry, I can confirm that there is a lot of stuff in buildings. And we need to account for all of it, the whole building, the totality of its emissions. It's all too common for designers and architects to celebrate hard won carbon savings for just one or two elements of the building while ignoring unmentioned wastefulness in other systems. All the parts need to be accounted for. For us, the data gap is fundamental to accelerating change. Last year, Arup made a voluntary commitment to assess whole life carbon across its building projects for the purpose of getting at this data. Now we've spent this last year taking this action on and building a technology platform which we call Zero. Zero has been designed to give us the ability to assess whole life carbon for any building, at any stage of design, and anywhere in the world. Our commitment led us to undertake an unprecedented global campaign of action to collect data from our teams around the world. We've built an international solution with the sophistication to assess whole life carbon for assets in any country around the world. And our first year of data draws on projects from more than 30 countries across five continents. The creation of the Platform Zero and the data we have collected with it draws on Arab expertise from around the world. We have assessed over 600 million square meters comprising 16 typologies of building. This will give us the ability to determine the carbon performance specific to building typologies. This will recognize the differences between realizing residential buildings in, say, Africa and industrial buildings in, say, Australia. Whole life carbon assessment and measurement is an emerging science, and we are learning at an incredibly fast pace. 
let me share one or two interesting things that we have learned from our assessment of the data. Our Zero platform maps completed work and future output so that buildings that will be brought online over the next decade can be accounted for. This enables us to chart our progress in our portfolio in contributing to the UN 2030 breakthrough outcomes. Here we can see that operational carbon is projecting an efficiency improvement of around 40% by the end of the decade. And this data ignores grid decarbonisation, which will improve for those locations where it occurs. The second point to note is that we're not able to confidently project improvement in embodied carbon in our global aggregated data set. This is influenced by the difficulty in assessing current day, country specific embodied carbon data for materials in a building, much less the future projected embodied data that incorporates grid decarbonisation in their manufacture. Designers urgently need to access reliable product information and future cost of innovative lower carbon materials to build this into our projections. What's also fair to say is that despite all of the good and creative work and innovation that's coming out of our teams around the world and other firms like ours, we are not yet meeting the ambitious Paris aligned targets for the end of this decade. If we ever wanted evidence that there is so much for us to be doing right now, here it is. Projected whole life carbon intensity increases with each design stage. Briefing stage tends to overshoot likely future outcomes. This is because we use historical benchmarks and th these don't yet reflect sensible design choices and current innovation. Early stage concept appears to be the most optimistic and in later stages of design the projected carbon emissions are greater. Now the optimist in me says that this might be because our concepts are innovative and respond to, to the new mission to decarbonize. Experience suggests that just like cost, the more detail that we generate through the course of the design, the better the estimates reflect the reality. Pessimistically, it may be that because value engineering concepts uh, are focused on reducing cost and that they don't respect carbon efficiency, that this may be causing carbon creep through the design process. The lesson for us here is that carbon effectiveness needs to become the performance metric for decision making right alongside cost. Design choices at early stages lock in carbon that's really hard to remove during the design process. So poor choices can lead to heavy retrofit to sustain viability. At brief stage, our clients and designers need quick, accurate, locally relevant starting benchmarks to set meaningful and achievable performance targets. At concept stage, we need carbon estimates alongside rapid prototyping to support the decisions to meet those targets. Once the concept is settled, the project team can perform detailed life cycle analysis that should endorse the concept. Our Zero platform will take feedback from detailed LCAs to refine the high level concept estimates and create more accurate benchmarks to try to prevent this carbon creep. Detailed data at scale gives us great learning insights. Here we see the relationship between carbon intensity per meter squared compared against the height of the building, the number of stories. Data like this offers us the power to really influence design choices. We can study best practice. We can critically examine poor performing projects and using these methods, we will drive down the trend to improve outcomes. My last point gets to the amount of stuff that's in a building and that by assessing the whole building approach, we're learning how all professions 
are coming at this from a de very different starting place. MEP engineers have sweated operational carbon for 50 years since the oil crisis of the 70s with barely sufficient attention to embodied carbon, while structural engineers are relishing this opportunity to think in new, innovative and creative ways to reduce material quantities and embodied upfront carbon. So gathering whole building data across the professionals is helping them to start ask better questions that will drive collaborative research and drive innovation across industry. So our message is one of encouragement and an invitation to collaborate with us. We're happy to share our methodology and experiences with those taking steps to address whole life carbon. On this journey, we've come to realize that this is not a technical problem. We have the capability, we have the technical solutions. This is a change management problem to change the mindsets of designers, engineers, builders, uh, developers, and to put carbon emissions at the center of design in just the same way we have with cost for millennia. But we absolutely need the data in our hands to be able to make better informed decisions at all the appropriate stages. When Arup committed to its net zero greenhouse gas reduction plan through SBTI in 2020, we understood that the emissions from our services would overshadow our carbon footprint emissions. Zero puts us in a position to understand the scale of impact from the services and from the advice that we provide to our clients. Thanks to Zero, we now have sight of our carbon footprint. It paints a picture of just how important it is for us to influence the outturn impacts of our projects. This startling image will be true for every design consultancy in the supply chain and highlights the significance of the role that we have to play in taking responsibility for our part in driving down decarbonisation at scale. Last point I'd like to leave you with is that Arup already has 50 million square metres of project work on the drawing boards scheduled to come online at that first critical milestone. Using Zero, we expect to be able to guide our clients to putting those projects on track to meet the 2030 building breakthrough outcome.